wondering why my eye makeup is so dark. Well, I was binge watching Avril Lavigne videos last night, and because of nostalgia, I was like, I want that makeup look. Cause her eye makeup was always bomb back then, and I always wanted that nice dark, smoky eye look or whatever. So this is my rendition. So I don't think it matches very well with this uh, bright kind of like, not Halloween Christmas theme. Yeah, yeah. So today I have a holiday video for you guys and as usual, just like any other video, it tends to be affordable because I gotta put out money to make these videos and I can afford all these expensive stuff and I'm assuming you guys can afford all the expensive things and at one point for DIYs, it's like, if it costs more to make it, you might as well buy it already made. You, you know what I, you know what I mean? You, uh, tell me you know what I mean. <laughs> However, these are not just any DIY gifts because there's so many of these videos on the internet that I was kind of like... Seriously though, some of these presents I would not even want and it just doesn't make any sense to give somebody that. It's like it's it's a useless piece of thing that you're making and giving to someone. So I tried to make some realistic things that people would actually want slash use or at least in my opinion anyways. And personally, not just because this is my video, but I really like all of these gifts. I would be so happy to receive all of them. Actually, I kind of made all of them for me and Daniel. <laughs> so this video is kind of like an excuse to you know, get myself working to make all these things. But honestly, they're great gifts in my opinion and I would really recommend that you guys make it for people. I think they're really thoughtful. I guess let's just get right into this video. Alright, so let's start off with my favorite, these faux marble coasters. I've always wanted marble coasters, but whenever I shop online, they're like $40 for a small pack, so I figured making your own is much better. First you need a template, I just printed out this hexagon off Google, I traced it onto some cardboard and cut it out. For the coaster base, I chose to go with cork because I like that a lot better than felt, just personal preference. I got a roll from the local craft store for $6, and then I found a thicker version at the dollar store for $4 after. So when you're shopping, just make sure you check the dollar store first because I feel kind of ripped off. Now taking the shape that we cut out before, trace a bunch of hexagons out on the cork sheet. I originally planned to skip the tracing and use a knife to cut the cork instead, but I learned the hard way that cork does not like getting cut with a knife. Now one problem I faced with my cork was that it was way too thin, so it was super flimsy and would not hold up well. So for now, cut out the hexagon shapes with scissors and we will deal with that problem later. Alright, now that you have your shapes, time to deal with the flimsiness. If your cork is thick and strong, you can totally skip this, but I had to improvise. So I'm taking some foam sheets that can also be found at your local craft or dollar store for $1-$2 to $2, and I'm tracing my hexagon shapes onto it. You can use anything else to help make it stronger, but this is just what I had on hand that was super cheap. And of course, in order to attach it on, we need to cut these out. Now I chose to use two cork pieces and one foam layer because I wanted the bottom to be cork and I felt like having a cork top would be better than a foam one because it's less squishy and less prone to denting. To attach them all together, I'm using super glue. Realistically, you're going to want to glue two pieces together, let it dry, then glue the last layer, but you know me, I'm impatient, so I just did it all at once. However, if you're struggling, then just do one layer at a time. Then, to keep the pieces together as they dry, take a heavy book and just plop it on top for a few minutes until the glue is completely set. You'll find that the cork, super glue, and foam made it extra sturdy so you don't have to worry about it breaking in half super easily. Now, taking a pair of sharp scissors, you can go around trimming off any excess to help refine the shape. I thought the coasters looked really cool as is, and if you'd like the look, you can keep it, but I'm going for marble. To get the marbled look, I'm using marble contact paper I found in the home and kitchen section of my local dollar store for $1.25. If you live in Canada in the GTA, I believe this is sold in most dollaramas. I have worked with this before, and in fact, it's the background for all my DIY videos, as you can see. 
But because I've worked with it before, I know it is very translucent, so we need to give the cork a white space or the white on the marble contact paper will look very dull and brown tinted. So I used the white acrylic paint, also from the dollar store, and painted the top and sides of the coaster. I wanted to keep the bottoms brown so I avoided it. You can also choose to tape off the bottom for a cleaner look or paint the entire thing white. Totally up to you. This took me about 4 layers to get it super white, but obviously this also depends on your paint. Now map out how much contact paper you need per coaster and cut out some rough squares. I made it so I had enough to go down the sides because I felt like that gave the coasters a more refined shape, but going down the sides is completely optional. As for attaching the contact paper, start with a corner or a bit of an exposed edge and slowly attach the cork to the contact paper, exposing more of the sticky side of the contact paper as you go. You can use a card or something flat to help smooth out any air bubbles. Now just trim off the excess. Again, I chose to have the marble going down the side, so I left some extras on the sides to fall down later. But you can trim it right to where the cork ends if you don't want that. To help the sides fold down, I'm cutting a small slit at every corner. Then just fold up each of the sides, smoothing down the edges and corners. If you find that the corners are struggling to stay sticking, use some glue to help it stay. I just use small dabs of hot glue here and there. When you're done, you should have these beautiful marble coasters. I really liked how clean these looked, so I left some as is. But my original plan was to add gold to the sides, so I did half and half for this coaster set. I'm using a 50-50 mix of metallic gold paint and Mod Podge for the sides. I'm mixing the two to avoid having the paint crack off later in the future. And as you guessed it, just paint it on. It took me about 2-3 to three coats to get it opaque enough for my tastes. And when the paint dries, you're done. The one thing I like about these being faux marble is that I don't have to be scared about dropping it and breaking it. So if the recipient is clumsy, this is definitely the better alternative. The next DIY is a set of hand warmers, perfect for that friend that always has cold fingers or hates the winter weather, aka me. For this project, you'll need some 100% cotton fabric or fabric that doesn't have anything that would melt like plastic. I really like this DIY because it's a great way to reuse old clothes or scraps that you have lying around and I have a lot of that. Start off by cutting two identical shapes out of fabric. I chose to go with a rectangle because I don't really have any good sewing skills, but you can make it into a heart, circle, abstract, whatever. To help decorate the hand warmers a bit more and make it look cuter, I'm also going to cut out a heart out of another piece of scrap fabric to go on top. I'm just using a simple stitch to attach the hearts into the middle of one of the sheets of fabric. Now put the two rectangles together with the nicer sides facing each other in the middle. And then just sew up the sides, leaving a small gap on one side. Now, I suck at sewing, so please excuse the poor hand sewing work, but just make it so that the sides are sewn shut. That's the main goal. As you can see, all sides are sewn shut except for a small gap. Open up the gap and use it to flip it inside out. It should work and it looks similar to a pillowcase. Now just make a funnel. I used a coffee filter because it was closest to me and I was lazy, but I'd recommend using something stiffer like paper. Insert the funnel into the hole and pour in some uncooked rice. You can fill this up as much or as little as you like. And finally, just sew the hole closed. 
And there you have it. You can make so many different variations of this as you saw before. I had a bunch of different versions. I even added a bow to this later. It's totally up to you for what you want to do. And I'm not gonna lie, this is actually really fun to squish. I think it's better than stress falls, so... <laughs> you know, two birds with one stone. As for how to use it, just pop it in the microwave for a few seconds. 15 to 10 seconds is what I recommend, depending on how hot you want it. The next DIY is pretty straightforward, it's just a customized blanket. Start off with an idea of what you want to sew on. I went with initials that I freehanded. Take that design and cut it out of some felt or excess fabric. I went with felt because it's easier to work with and doesn't fray as easily. As for the blanket, I'm using a super soft blanket from Walmart. This was only $5 and I'm sure you can find them cheaper after the holidays as well in the sales section if you plan ahead of time. I plan on putting the felt shapes in the corners so I'm just going to pin the designs into place and sew it on. For the hearts, I wanted it to look super rough and zigzag like so I'm just sewing from one end to the other over and over again. As for the letters, I'm just using a simple stitch for that handmade type of feel. And after that, you are done. It's a really simple way to make something basic more personal. Finally, our last DIY can be two things. A stir and pour cake mix to avoid dishes when baking or a cute way to store some cookies. Start off with a clean Pringles container because you do not want your baked goods smelling and tasting like whatever chips were in there. By the way, Pringles ketchup chips are the worst ketchup chips I've ever tasted and I really like ketchup chips, so I would definitely not recommend this at all. Now wrapping and decorating this can is really up to you. I decided I'd use a lot of the existing craft stuff I already had to save money. I'm using brown paper as a base for that simple look. I don't even know where this paper came from, but it's just always been in my basement, so I'm using it. I also hate using anything but double-sided tape for wrapping presents. Does anybody else feel like that? I'm also lining the tops and bottoms with washi tape to help secure the wrapping. Then taking some fake leaves from an old DIY, I cut it into mistletoe leaves. And we can't forget about the berries. And then I decided to add some ribbons as well in the traditional holiday colors, just wrapping it around and tying a knot. To make the ribbons more dainty, I cut them down the middle and gave them pointed ends. To finish it off, I just glued on the mistletoe and that's about it. As for filling it, you can fill it with cookies or any other treats and give it as a gift. It'd probably be more sentimental if they were homemade cookies. Or alternatively, you could just fill it with some cake mix. You can even make your own cake mix if you want, but I kind of just want for the prepackaged one because confetti. I love confetti. If you are using prepackaged cake mix, I would probably recommend that you use two thirds or one third because the entire thing fills up way too much and you're not going to be able to put in any eggs or whatever liquids you need for this recipe, as you can tell. Because this variation is a recipe, you'll need to write down some directions. I'm using a doily as a tag because it just looks cuter in my opinion. I originally wanted this to be a shake and bake, but I found that the cap doesn't secure onto the can as well as I thought, so liquids can leak out. Instead, change it to a stir and bake on the tag instead. Either way, you're still saving dishes whenever whoever is making this, because you don't really need a bowl. You kind of just take a spoon and stir it around in the canister and then pour it out. And of course, just attach the tag to somewhere on the canister because this is very important or else they're just going to be stuck with a bunch of powder that they don't know what to do with it. And that's about it. So in order for them to use it, they just take off the cap and then just add in whatever liquid ingredients they need. So usually for most cake recipes, it's just water, oil, and eggs for the standard pre-made mixes. After that, all they would do, as I said before, is just take a spoon or something and just stick it inside the mix and mix it all around. 
And the great thing about a Pringles can is that the opening is perfect for pouring the cake mix into cupcake liners without dripping everywhere. And yes, I do fill my liners up more than you're supposed to do because I like muffin tops, so that means I love cupcake tops. The more the better. Then all the recipient has to do is bake the cupcakes or cake according to the directions and they end up with cupcakes that were totally mess free to make. If you guys made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys really like it. If you guys have any videos you guys want me to film, I'm actually going to be in Texas, so if you want Daniel to be in it, I can make a video in it too. I'll just make him be in it even if he doesn't want to be. <laughs> and also, don't forget to comment down below and let me know what you asked for for Christmas. And I will see you all later. Bye-bye.